Well, ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, and what a grand pleasure it is to be here. And thank you for inviting me to help launch the 150th Alliance. We just heard a little bit of a warning sign, Le Salon EC and uh, the National Arts Centre opening two years late. That won't work for the 150th. <laughs> and don't be confused like that uh, legendary union leader who came back to the union hall after uh, a long all-night negotiating session, seven o'clock in the morning, his brothers and sisters, he says, I have bad news, but I have good news. The bad news is we've had to take a 10% salary cut. The good news, it's retroactive to last July 1st. <laughs> Don't let that happen. <laughs> I'm so pleased to see many of you united under this common cause to encourage all Canadians, all Canadians, as we approach the 150th anniversary of Confederation in 2017. Je suis très heureux d'être parmi vous. Ce matin, alors que vous êtes ici pour créer une alliance, autour du 150e anniversaire de Canada. In fact, this alliance, made up of like-minded organizations, represents what Canadians do best, working together to find new and exciting ways to better this nation. It's something we've done always throughout our history. And remember those words of Margaret Mead, never doubt the power of a small group of committed citizens around an important idea to change the world and it's the only thing that has. So let's change the world as we think of the 150th. As you participate in the discussions, I hope you take inspiration from our past. As Chief White Duck has said, we gather, for example, on the traditional territory of the Algonquin Nation. First Nations have a long and special link with this land and have much to teach us about cooperation. I had a wonderful lesson of that two days ago. We were alert in Nunavut, which is 200 kilometers mile, 200 kilometers south of the Northwest Pole, is the most northerly inhabited community in the world. And it exemplified how much Canada is a nation of from sea to sea to sea, all three of those S's. And the classic struggle of man against nature, man versus man, man versus himself, was it, or accentuated in that very harsh and demanding climate but it was marvelous to see how cooperative endeavor could overcome great obstacles and the enormous debt we owe to the first settlers of this country, our indigenous people, who were at the forefront of dealing of those versus issues and making it possible for settlement to occur in this great land. And I'm quite inspired by that. And it's that kind of inspiration that gives me such excitement about celebrating the 150th and seeing it as an important launch pad for the next chapter in Can Canada's illustrious history. Nous pourrions apprendre des pères de la Confédération qui, entièrement dévoués à l'esprit de compromis et de collaboration, ont travaillé ensemble pour poser les assises du pays qu'est aujourd'hui le Canada. J'observe ce même esprit dans les rencontres comme celle-ci et en chacun de vous. Dans cette pièce se trouvent les principaux penseurs de 2017, ceux qui auront une influence essentielle sur nos célébrations. Je vous encourage non seulement à faire preuve de créativité, mais aussi à être des visionnaires. Our 150th anniversary is more than a party. Indeed, the party is a small part of it. It's an opportunity to project an image of what kind of country we are and what we want to be in the future. It's more like a trampoline, isn't it? It's a chance to say to Canadians and to the world that we're proud of our history and our people, but we're just getting started. Doing good deeds, changing and improving the lives of those in need, that's what you do every day. And when you join forces, when we join forces, when we share resources and ideas and goals, we amplify our impact right across the nation. That should be, and no doubt will be, the end result of the leadership you have all shown throughout this process with weekly calls, not bad. Yet there is still much to do and much to discuss before 2017 and many questions to answer. Let me just list some of them. I'm sure all have occurred to you and there would be many more. What will our gift be? After all, at birthdays we bring gifts, don't we? How much of a lasting legacy will we leave with what we do here? 
What are the most pressing concerns? What are the most pressing concerns and how do we address them? What can we do as individuals and organizations to strengthen our communities? How will we reach out to Canadians, to all Canadians, and to the world to invite them to participate? What can we do that will make people stand up and take notice? À la fin 2010, je suis devenu gouverneur général et j'ai commencé à parler de la chance remarquable que nous offre le 150e anniversaire à venir. Cinq années se sont depuis écoulées et il n'en reste plus que deux côtes avant les montants attendus. Voilà pourquoi vos échanges sont si importants. So it's now time to transform our talk into action. I have a phrase that I think I overuse, when all is said and done, more will be said than will be done. Our challenge is to turn that upside down, to be contrarian Canadians, to turn that upside down. More will be done than will be said. And that's quite a statement coming from me because after all, I'm a lawyer and we lawyers are paid by the word. <laughs> so, transforming talk into action. We engage Canadians in local, national, and international initiatives. And I really stress the local. How do we make this great celebration grassroots in every sense of the word and build from the community level? How do we honor 150 years of Canada, honor those years, working together to better ourselves and the opportunities we present to subsequent generations of Canadians? Pierre Burton once called 1967 the 100th anniversary of Confederation, Canada's last good year. Well, with your help, 2017 can be Canada's next great year with many great years to come. I wish all of you a fruitful, productive day here. And I want to express as warmly and enthusiastically as I can our thanks for your efforts to give back to our nation and to use this great celebration as a true launching pad. Je vous souhaite à tous une journée productive qui nous mènera vers 2017. Merci. Thank you very much. Et bonne chance. Good luck. Um, we're all in the thick of planning uh, across the country, and in 2017, the NAC is hoping to work with many of you in this very room to mount a very major festival called the Canada Scene. And if you take a look on your tables, there are cards, and it talks about the Ontario Scene. The Ontario Scene is uh, this year's version of uh, the Scene Festivals. C'est un uh, festival qui a été créé en 2003 par Peter Hernorf, notre président, une façon pour le CNA d'honorer et mettre en vedette une région différente du pays à tous les deux ans. Et depuis 2003, on a fait la scène Atlantique, la scène du Québec, la scène d'Alberta, la scène de la Colombie-Britannique, la scène des Prairies, la scène nordique et cette année, entre le 29 avril et le 10 mai, la, le, la scène de l'Ontario. So, Ontario scene is taking place this spring and we'll have 600 artists from across Ontario here at the National Arts Centre. Uh, but you know, it's a, it's a coincidence, but um, the 20th, well, at least the 25th anniversary of the Scene Festivals will take place in, of course, 2017. We're finishing the cycle, and it ends in 2017. Amazing. It's just luck. So uh, the Canada Scene will be a month-long festival with hundreds of artists, emerging and established artists from across the country, and we're planning to do it here. But what's even more exciting is that we're planning to do it in a uh, very beautiful building. This building is beautiful, but it's about to be enhanced. And we're still pinching ourselves and thanking the Government of Canada for green lighting a project uh, that we've been working very quietly on for the last four years. So, take a look. This is our project. All right, thanks, Rosie. Morning, everybody. Morning, everybody. Hi. All right, okay. So, you know, His Excellency was great, but he's gone. We can all loosen the tie a little bit. Um, uh, uh, Chief White Duck, thank you. I was, I, was, I was mentioning to Chief White Duck, I live north of, uh, north of here, up towards Wakefield. And, um, and so in the springtime, my son Alexander, because he likes ho ice hockey, you know, I've got an 11-year-old, and he, um, he joins up 
um, with a group that's drawn from Manawaki and, um, and, and from out near Shawville and, and uh, Val de Mont and all across. And I, I come from the West Coast, from Vancouver. And so we have this amazing experience for two months where a West Coast kid, you know, the North Shore Mountains, joins up with this Francophone community and the community of the Algonquin, and we play hockey. Um, uh, we didn't win a game <laughs> last spring, but we did score one goal in two tournaments. Uh, of course, the kids don't remember any of that. It's this whole experience and exchange, and, and, and uh, so just a coincidence, and here you're an educator in that community. I, that's ex it's superb. Um, Thank you, Peter and Rosemary. Here we are again. Um, this is like home base. Uh, it feels like we're coming home uh, for these conversations. And um, I think the, uh, um, you get ready for these things, right? Everyone, Anne Marie, wherever she is, she's been hustling like crazy and all the people helping out. And there's like, how do we get everyone in the room? How do we keep more people engaged? Because we couldn't get everyone in the room. Um, and you, you deal with the complexity of putting on an event. You know, how many agendas do you think we went through, right? You know, how do we get it all in and who can fit and who can make it? PEI, oh great, they're coming, you know, all that goes on. And, um, and, and then you wonder, like, what's the simple part of it all? And, um, and so for me, it's, I have a, uh, my, Alexander's younger sister, Sophie, she's, she's nine years old. And does anyone know that kid that's like the, the proliferation of questions kid, you know? You can think, imagine a little girl, nine years, nine years old, um, and she, she just is, is always on the curiosity path. And, and it ends up being, so what are you up to today, Dad? And, and I say, well, okay, we're go, going off. All sorts of people are getting together because it's, uh, there's an occasion coming up in a couple of years where Canada will be 150 years old, you know? Oh, great, it'll be a great party, you know? Uh, who's all coming? I say, well, yeah, the people will come. We expect there'll be a party. Um, but maybe not for everybody. You know, not everyone will maybe think of it as a party. Well, why would that be? Birthday parties are just good things. Well, for some, it's actually been a sad 150 years, you might say. Oh, yeah. Well, why would that be? You know? Well, because we don't always find a way to connect with one another, to support one another through our history. Sometimes we don't know one another well enough. Okay, I get it. It's like the first day of school, <laughs> you know, and right. And it's like, well, yeah. So that's kind of what we're doing. It's sort of like the first day of school for some of us. Except some of us have been getting together for the last five years. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that'll be like next year when I turn go to grade five, right? I know some of the kids, though, but there'll be some, some, some new arrivals, you know. So, so what are you gonna do, Dad? Well, we're gonna we're we're gonna get ready because we want to work on the parts that's the celebration and the part are, that are the hard conversations. Uh, we want to get to know one another. We want to open this up to others. And, and so I just think as part of um, what we go through, for me anyways, it helps when I think about younger folks. It helps me when I think about Sophie. It helps me when I get those simple questions that turn all the complexity, the, the difficult, the challenging stuff, and it really just makes it straightforward. You know, not, not as easy. I, I, I would hope, I think we would hope that the 150th would be an inflection point for some of the, the hard parts uh, of trying to be a country as amazing, but also as uh, contentious and as the balance of pluralism and then the things that connect us. And, and so I just, uh, that's esoteric at some level, but then somehow a nine-year-old makes it very straightforward and opens up that space space for us uh, so that was breakfast at 6 30 Sophie gets up around 5 30 you know and uh, reminds me it's time to get the day going um, look I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna move through a few slides that just catch us up and then um, I'm gonna introduce Andrew Campbell who's a great fellow helping uh, lead the way with Canada 150 and and um, you don't need me to remind you of what we're looking at there, I don't think. Um, many people have their stories of 67 and Montreal and, and what that meant. Um, really just a moment in time like many moments in time where the country kind of pivots and finds one another, uh, tries to figure out what lies ahead and often looks back. Uh, we've got a lot of these kinds of moments, right? There's others that are really inspiring. 
Um, where are the sport gang? There's got to be some sport folks in here somewhere. Yeah, okay, there they are, right? Way to go, you guys. Good job back then. You know, you can't rest on your laurels, though. That was four or five years ago. I, I see, right? <laughs> what do you got for us in two years, Sioux Island and whoever else is out there? But it was, you know, it, it, we, we know um, um, Phil uh, von Finkenstein, who I think I saw is going to be here, here later, he was reminding us of how when you go out and you do the polling and you ask Canadians about these moments, you know, this was one where they, we really connected, eh? There was a, even, even if, you know, my wife's not that much into the sports stuff, but she was watching, you know, parallel giant slalom snowboarding. Who knew, right? So there was some kind of connection that happens in moments like these that, that kind of draw us out and we, get, we come together as, as, as nations, you might say. Um, uh, but, it, but it's not just in the, it, uh, the, the kinds of things that are truly collective experiences. Um, some of them happen because something happens that's an exemplar of a country, right? Do folks know who that is, hey? Alice Monroe, right? Great, great short stories, and, he, and she would say when she wins the, won, won the Nobel Prize that, that this was a moment for our our, our, our literary scene, right? It was a moment for our many authors and writers and, and readers. It wasn't just hers. And we know in this room there's a number of those things in the making, right? That it can be a particular moment or even a particular person. You know, Clara Hughes always comes to mind too. as someone that just seems to kind of hold it all together for all of us. Alice Monroe would be there, Chris Adfield, you know? Things happen with individuals and then you come away and you think that's all of us somehow, you know? So she's pretty cool. And then there's great things that connect us. Truly, this connects us. There's the, the, the Trans-Canada Trail. Deborah's apps is out there, and probably some board members, too, are out there who've been charging on. And this is a goal to complete this, right? That the trail might be one of those things that we, we look upon as a, a grand achievement amongst the many possibilities, right? This, this sort, of, sort of physical expression of the connection from sea to sea to sea, as the Governor General mentioned, yeah, you know, not bad, but we still have more, more work to do. Um, there's lots of others. Do, do folks know uh, a little bit about this one, a sense of what it means? Come on, you've all been around the camp, campfire, right? Right? Most people have. Has anyone not been around a campfire? <laughs> so there's a campfire project. And the campfire project where, okay, they must be there. Everyone's turning. Hi, oh, way to go, Leanne. You know, so, so it's campfire project. It's this idea of what happens around the campfire, right? What happens around a campfire? We talk to one another. We tell stories, right? How, many, how, many, how much do we want to amplify that sense of conversation? Uh, so there's all these, th these amazing things that could happen at a moment like this uh, where there's a sense of engagement, civic engagement. Uh, and, and we might imagine through conversation and through action things that could be, could be different, an inflection point for the, for the country. So I, 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 I could keep going, right? And, and you'll forgive me because I can't tell the hundred stories because they're all out there. These are meant to embody something, not, not uh, uh, cover the territory and providing some examples. But this is what's happening as underway. It's not like this is the future. These, this is all happening. You're all, it's, it, it's, it's, it's in play. Uh, and, and so there's, there's something more that can come from connecting the many different things that are happening, sometimes independently, by bringing them, bringing them together. Um, so that's, that's a little bit what we do, 191 community foundations. As His Excellency said, these are built from the ground up. Canadians have gone about building these by making their own private contributions to create something that matters, a kind of community infrastructure. Uh, you can imagine with 191, it, it really reaches right across the country. And, and more and more, because there's that scope and reach, we at Community Foundations of Canada have said, we need to look for ways that we can help to amplify the aggregate of all that community engagement. And when the 2017 uh, crew was getting together, Peter and folks were gathering, we said, oh, that's a place we can pitch in and help. And then just as time passed, we said, all right, well, let's help catalyze. Let's help provide a bit of a backbone to all this good work that's going on and offer that up. Just hold it out there as, as something that people could jump in and get involved in, opt into. 
no obligations, but just come and, and, and be a part of it. Uh, and it's a natural place for us in a little bit because the best of the community foundations, the ones that have been at it for a long time, who've, who've learned really the process of community engagement know that that's how you build community, right? You offer up that opportunity for people to contribute, invite them in, and, and off we go working together in, a, in an egalitarian kind of way. Uh, so we, uh, we jumped in, found our good friends at CBC. They're out there too, where John, I think we'll hear from later, John Wims. Uh, great uh, support from VIA. Off we went, 12 cities across the country. Um, uh, and just to listen and provide a venue in which Canadians could express their hopes and aspirations in, 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 and aspire to. Because I think the, the web platform's still available. You can go and listen to what Canadians had to say, you know. Six, seven, eight uh, talks, 12 different cities, um, some crazy ideas, and, and, and ones that, um, that, that are reflected in this room. Uh, and from those discussions, uh, all sorts of things, uh, themes emerge, supporting the arts, you know, engaging youth, a, a sense of uh, citizenship, uh, and what would the legacy be from all of this? If we were to go through all of this, would we come out the other end with something that endured? Right, a moment, yes, but would there be things that endured, not just in a physical sense, uh, but things that endured in terms of could there be an inflection point for the country and it would find its way, a new way. Maybe we might find one another amongst Aboriginal peoples, non-Aboriginal peoples, for instance. Uh, so when we drew that group back together again, hey, where did we come? Back home here to the NAC and people came together and we thought it was the harvesting of all those conversations that had a, were held across the country, capture the themes, tool people up and say, get back out there and do your thing. We held the session, people said, yes, we'll do that, and they said, but we can't stop keeping this group coming together. We need to find a way to knit together the infrastructure of an alliance. Uh, and that's what's brought us uh, back round to to today. Um, we at CFC know what it means to build networks and we've seen what happens when organizations do come together. Within that community foundation space we've experienced that but this is not us. This is not about us. This is about all of us and what we're, we imagine for the Alliance and what we'll talk about today is its potential to be that network to act as a curator of the good things that are going on, as a connector, and as a catalyst for activity and engagement and the critical discussions that are necessary to grapple with both the goodness and the sad parts, right? Both the hopeful things and the things that occupy uh, us in the middle of the night when you wonder how could that be in a country as remarkable as Canada. And, and could we facilitate that, support that, be an enabling platform to that and build it together, as Canadians have largely done long before 150 years? Uh, the Alliance will look to be an open network that will connect organizations around 2017, support the work, act as that catalyst curator at the community level and across communities so that there's a, a, a spanning beyond boundaries, a connective tissue, perhaps some things that can then transcend the local and, and really exemplify the uh, can Canadian sensibility. It'll, in, it'll engage many more Canadians than are reflected here, of course, and it will encourage that deeper collaboration, storytelling, and critical discourse that invites others in to uh, what the future could hold. So today we hope you'll help us create that alliance in a, in a, in a real way. Like this is, not the, this is not even so much the end of the beginning, right? This is like the, the movement into the doing. Like from here we start to work together is what's, what's, uh, what's imagined. Uh, we do so benefiting from others. So uh, Penny McGuire and David McKenzie I know are here somewhere. You know, the, the mighty folks from PEI, where are they? Oh, they, oh, oh, right in front of me, of course. You know, so, so hey, they must be feeling great. It's January 2015, you know. They, they did it, the, the Charlottetown Conference, the anniversary of the Charlottetown Conference in 2014, and PEI was this rip-roaring 
um, uh, a set of moments. Uh, I, I think a, a good, a great balance of those celebrations and then some of the things that were critical to the future of PEI. Uh, they invited the country to come to them, and boy, folks did. They took their island uh, uh, sensitivity and they shared it with the rest of us. So much to learn, and from from culture days, from. Cities for People, The Mighty Gang at Sport Matters, all sorts of different ways of organizing in new ways, right, that cr create a kind of open environment for contributions, that welcome people in to um, creating something that they couldn't achieve on their own. So we're, we're, we've, we've, learned from, we've learned from others. There's, there's um, so many examples that are right here in this room that we could unpack. And I think it's important to know um, uh, uh, that that ongoing learning is critical to the Alliance. Not a, not a fixed state of affairs. Uh, it's not that we know what it is today and by the end of the day we'll affirm that and then we, we hold on to it. We expect it will evolve. That the viral nature, the, the, the so, socially mediated nature of Canada today will necessarily require us to pivot and adapt and adjust. But we'll move ahead and act today knowing that those adjustments can be made. Uh, so today, specifically around today. Hey, check that out. Do you get, folks, do you know what this is? Has anyone seen this? Yeah? Is there someone in the room that might really know this? Is Tim in the room? Yeah, okay, there he is. The Canadian Mosaic Project, check this out. Well, t yeah, well, Tim, maybe you'll have a chance to share in more detail. But if any, you, you gotta understand the persistence of someone. Uh, how, how many photographs, Tim? 40,000 Canadians from coast to coast. 40,000, so far. <laughs> So they, to just capture the imagery of who we are, right, and that sense of our uniqueness, and yet this tapestry, as you can see, that sort of weaves us together. Pretty cool. Um, uh, it, and, and just embodies this sense of collecting us, which is today, collecting the story so far. Uh, the mosaic embodies this idea of setting our intentions. What do we intend to do uh, as, as an alliance? To define what matters setting the outcomes and milestones that we want to accomplish together. And if we can, if, if we make it through the able facilitation of the folks at Mass, identify those gaps and opportunities that we're gonna persist in closing or run after and, and, and truly make a difference. Um, so look, let me, uh, let me wrap it up there. there. There'll be lots to share, I'm sure, come the end of the day and through the course of the day. Uh, we'll endeavor to capture that, of course. Um, and, and, and know that we provide an ongoing opportunity for people to continue to onboard their ideas, right? That it's today, yes, but it's, it's, it's clearly what happens tomorrow and the days thereafter. Uh, superb. So look, I, I want now to um, invite Andrew Campbell uh, uh, to come forward. Andrew and his, his uh, growing, uh, uh, quickly growing team at Canadian Heritage, um, Canada 150, uh, is, is just this enthusiastic guy with all sorts of stories to tell. I think you've been up north too, uh, once, or twice. once or twice around the, the, the Franklin expedition. Um, but but Andrew's going to give us a good sense of, of where things are at and uh, uh, introduce uh, 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 the outlook from Canadian heritage. Thank you, Andrew, for being with us. Great. Thanks, Ian.